Okay, I've been asked what I'm doing to my raw files before processing in DSS. I'm going to show you a short video of just exactly what I'm doing. It's not structured as such or a specific technique. It's just something I'm trying out and it's um, still a work in progress really. So I'm going to just open up some of my RAWs when I find which ones they are. I'm not going to do all of them, just a small bunch. Right, so here we are with the RAWs and the first thing I'm going to do is start white balancing them. You can see when you open them up in camera RAW down on the left here you get the whole selection. You can either just work on one or you can select all of them and apply the adjustments as you go. Otherwise you can click synchronize and it will apply the settings as you go. The important thing to take note of is that you're running in 16-bit so change your images to those so you're working the right workspace that applies globally in camera raw. So, colour balancing. I've got the clipped highlights on so we can see exactly what's happening um, in the stack. So I'm going to cool it down possibly to around 2600. Maybe 2650 is good. It's rather purple, but of course we're going to balance it out with the green tint. i bring that back. And paying note to the histogram, you can see exactly what's going on. So we've hit 2,500 in the end, uh, minus 82 green tint. That seems about right. An interesting thing is, we can see that the clipping has changed. So we move away from preview. And the clipping is reduced already, which is a good thing. And in camera raw, you're editing the white balance on the raw. Um, which is much easier than doing it later on in a TIFF, say out of DSS, you're actually doing the source file so you can change pretty much everything about it, the temperature and the tint is all much easier to correct for. Then we're going to look at getting the most data out of the raw as possible. Uh, zoom in to about 100% here. And what we're going to do first is start to recover this large clipped area on the core here. And the very good thing with digital sensors is they are good when you're overexposing. You can recover a lot more detail out of highlights than you can on shadows. So if possible you always want to push more detail and get more exposure and it will be easier to recover that than pushing up a dark picture. So on the last stack I used recovery up to 100. It'd be good if I turn preview on. There we are. So you can see here, we're recovering a lot of that lost detail. Get the edges in here. You can see star details where there was no detail before. I'll turn the clipping off. And you can see right here, there's a lot more detail resolved once you've recovered. Clipping is still there, but it's not particularly a problem. We're going to be replacing the core later on and stacking and post-processing. Then you want, next slide we're going to is contrast and we're going to push that up to about 50. It will bring the clipping up a bit but you get a better detail and highlights in the rest of the nebula. And then the final uh, slider I'm going to move is going to be clarity. And I'm pushing it up to 100% and you can see, especially when I turn clipping off, the difference that makes. And then we'd apply the same to all the images, so we get exactly the same settings. However, you may want to keep on white balancing your images. These aren't too bad, but on long stacks where you've got lots of data and lots of time, the sky background can change colour as it moves so you might want to rebalance some things. I'm not going to save these, um, I already have um, a whole load set to this. Um, oh, and the last thing is noise and colour reduction. We leave everything 
on default. We don't want to mess with that because it will all get resolved and sorted out in the stack. So there's no worry about how much grain there is or anything else like that. We're just primarily worried about showing the detail off properly. So I'm now going to bring up some of the rules I worked on earlier. I'm going to stack them in the same time as these. Um, with all the same settings for detail, I'm going to leave them on the as shot white balance. So they will look, well, they will look exactly like this. Um, so there we are with as shot white balance. All the details are the same. We can see when we're changing it from custom a little less clipping, not a significant amount once we've done all our amount, um, changes. But we're going to go and see how well the SS manages colour in this version compared with colour in this version. Right, we're computing the final picture for the um, non-white balance adjusted ones and we have a finalised picture for the ones which have been changed already. They're being stacked on exactly the same stacking method which is going to be auto-adaptive average and we're not stacking with any darks, we're just stacking with lights. I didn't take darks for this set of photos. Um, the 1100D generally runs quite clean and it also ran out of battery so you know, never mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is go drag my colours and align them down near the bottom of the histogram here. I often just click the top and it's a good point for reference I find. So I can start off everywhere roughly the same. And it's nice to just do it all the same. Some settings work differently or better in some situations but for the point today I'm just going to keep it in one place. Luminance I'm going to bring the mid tones to around 5 to exaggerate the differences. I'm going to leave the mid tone at 33 as well for the second slider and the highlights I'm going to push up to around 59 which often seems to work quite well for me. Saturation I'm going to push up to around 15 to 20 percent. You never really need more than 20 percent. You start to oversaturate the image and get colour casts and boundaries and posterizing. Right, here we are on the other image which has now been stacked and we're going to just go and align that. You see the colour channels are slightly different in the way they're aligned. So we're going to just move these over I'm always stacking them in logarithm square root for these and we're going to move them down to around about the same place should be there and this is all the same data 43 frames or 43 frames you see the colours are different already even though everything data wise was done to the same thing. I haven't done this before yet so we'll see how it happens. It might be pretty much the same. I'm going to set everything to the same amount so we're going to bring down mid tones to 5 and push the highlights up to 59.1 saturation we're also going to put on to 20% and bear in mind you can always take it down in post processing if it's too much I prefer to add a bit more and then deal with that and undersaturate in my post processing other than trying to oversaturate in my post processing. We'll apply that. Yeah, already we can see, despite our colour channels being aligned, we've got some green in there. And it's quite a big green cast, and our whites are not white. Um, all the same data. Um, and there we have it, we got a big difference already. We tried to match up our luminance as close as possible. All the same amounts. Running on 85.1. 80, there we are. My bad. Not massive difference, however. So, 
This means already that our image on the left, which we corrected for white balance for, is going to be easier to balance out in post-processing. So we're going to take both and save them out. There we are, here's our two different images. If the same stacks, both the same settings. Now we're going to have a look in detail. So let's zoom into 100% on that. Detail level is fine, we've got good definition in faint areas. Much the same, really. Got a little bit of posterizing happening here, and again on the same picture. It's slightly magenta in tone this way, it's not perfect, but it's much better than the green tone we've got here. So, that about sums it up.